You guys wanna go see a big pitch pine tree? Me too. Let's go. I'm really starting to run out of creative ways that I can do intros for these tree hunting videos. There's only so many different, you know, kind of phrasings you can use for, let's go look at a big tree. All right, let's get down to business. So we're looking for the uh, Connecticut state champion pitch pine today, which has, in my opinion, one of the coolest uh, evolutionary traits of pretty much any native tree you can find in New England. So I'm pretty excited for this one and to tell you all about it. But we're gonna have to save that till we get to the tree. Real fine layer of mist in this little brook valley right here too. Hey, check this out. There used to be something here on this little brook. Maybe a mill? Let's see. See the stone wall over there? A lot of that is cut stone. I look right there, I'm not sure you can see it from here, but you can see the grooves in there, the telltale sign that we're looking at some quarry stone. So definitely a dam of some kind used to be here. Probably a mill, but too much snow for me to really see anything else, like a foundation or some, or anything like that. Mostly hemlocks like this one up here right now, and a few Eastern white pine. I don't think I've seen even a single pitch yet. All right, I see some very thick trunked trees down here. Dang, now it's really getting misty. Look at this. All right, I think we've gotten about as close as we can on an actual trail, which means it's time to bushwhack it a little bit. And wouldn't you know it, but we got a game trail right here. So maybe a few deer wanted to go check out the champion too. Dang, look at this big fallen white pine right here. Or one trunk of it fell at least. Look at that, that's huge. Another little brook. Look, you can see where the deer cross it right here. Trail continues on the other side. We're gonna go down the brook a little bit. Cause it looks like our tree is real close now. Oh man, I think I see it. That has gotta be it. That is a big old pitch pine. Holy cats, that has to be it. Look at that guy. That is huge. Oh man, that's definitely it. I'll check my GPS just to be sure, but I'd be shocked there's a bigger pitch pine than this one around here. A little lonely too. Don't see all that many other ones. All right, I just checked it out on my map. This is 110% gotta be our pitch pine and it totally is deserving of being a state champion because that is a huge pitch pine. Like normally this species of pine tree is kind of on the small side in comparison to other conifers, especially the Eastern white pines you can find around the rest of New England, which we've also been seeing a bunch of on our walk here. But as you can see, this particular specimen is pretty dang big. Oh, and while we're on the topic of Eastern white pines, it's actually pretty common for people to confuse pitch pines with that that species of tree. So a surefire way to tell the difference is just the amount of needles on uh, in the little groups that you'll pick off the branches. Eastern white pine needles are five to a group, pitch pine are three to a group. Oh, and uh, as far as range goes, you can find pitch pines growing naturally from roughly around central New England all the way down through the Appalachians just into the tip of Georgia. They're also notable for being the most common tree you'll find out in the New Jersey pine barrens too. Uh, speaking of uh, growth and habitat though, 
One of the coolest things about this kind of tree is its resilience and ability to grow in some pretty tough environments. In particular, it handles both salt and sand a whole lot better than most of the rest of the pine trees in New England. So you can find a lot of pitch pine growing real close to the sea coast or sprouting out a really sandy soil. You know, spots that would be uh, really hostile to other conifers. Oh, and fire too is another environmental factor that the pitch pine handles real well. If you've been watching the show for a while, then you've heard me talk about stump sprouting before, which is basically when a tree stump sends up new shoots after it's been cut down or burned down or damaged in some kind of way, right? Well, the pitch pine is actually a very active stump sprouter. They can survive wildfires that might totally kill off all the other types of trees in an area and then send up some new sprouts right after the fire is cleared through. So thick stands of only pitch pine can sometimes be an indicator that a wildfire has swept through somewhere. Oh, and then they also just kind of generally send out new shoots or trunk split quite a bit as a response to just any kind of stress or damage too, not just wildfire. So it's very, very common to see split trunked pitch pines like this one, for example. And also it's uh, partially due to that tendency to split that the pitch pine has such a like kind of strange history with humans in terms of use of the tree and construction and timber production and stuff like that. Like the fact that the tree splits and doesn't really grow that straight makes it not super desirable for lumber. But despite that, it's still seen plenty of use for stuff like shipbuilding and fence posts because of the tree's super high resin content. All that sap makes pitch pine wood really resilient to decay. So people have historically just kind of put up with the janky way the tree grows in order to get some really reliable wood out of it. And as you can probably guess, the high resin levels are where the name pitch pine comes from too. Oh, and one last cool tidbit about the resin. These trees are also sometimes called some Something along the lines of like torch pine or candlewood pine, you know, stuff like that. Because back in the day, people would cut knots out of these trees and then stick them onto the end as some kind of like stick or a pole or something like that, and then light the knot on fire. So the super high resin content would keep the knot burning for a long time. So you could basically make yourself a nice little natural torch that way. And of course, uh, Native Americans made use of the tree before the Europeans got here too. Like pitch pine was used a lot for stuff like canoes and then also as medicine. Uh, I read that the pitch was used in particular a lot as a laxative. All right, and lastly, I wanted to talk for a minute about our friend the pitch pine here's relationship to both fire and human development. You see, uh, the pitch pine's resiliency to wildfire is a lot more than just some kind of like incidental thing. Pure pitch pine forests actually actively depend on wildfire in order to sustain themselves. You see, pitch pines are pretty shade intolerant, so if some big leafy deciduous tree like a maple or an oak is growing above it, it's gonna crowd out all of the smaller pitch pines trying to grow underneath, right? Which will effectively over time kill off the pitch pine forests or at least very heavily overtake them and only leave behind the really big ones like this one that can poke out through the canopies of those bigger trees. So pitch pines need wildfires to burn through areas every once in a while to kill off any small oaks or maples that might at some point grow taller than them and block their access to the sun. But it goes even deeper than just that. In some kind of really just spectacular connection between two parts of the natural world, the pitch pine actually creates special kinds of pine cones in addition to the normal pine cones that are literally heat activated. Like they're closed completely off from the inside with resin so that an intense amount of heat is required to melt the resin, burn it, and open up the pine cone and spread seeds. So if a wildfire comes through an area, especially a really hot one that is even gonna kill the more resilient pitch pines, all of their pine cones that they've dropped on the ground over the last few years, like little heat activated time bombs will burst open and spread new pitch pine seeds all across that brand new, fresh, fertile soil. Isn't that just amazing? But you can probably guess where I'm going with this, right? As human development has increased and got more thick along the East Coast, wildfires have had more and more control placed on them. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but it has happened. 
which over time has caused pitch pine forests that depend on wildfire to decline very sharply. Like remember I was talking about the New Jersey pine barrens earlier? Well, a whole lot, re a whole lot of the rest of the East Coast and New England looked a lot like that. You can see uh, similar forests on Long Island and Cape Cod too. Even here in Connecticut, we used to have a whole ton of pitch pine barrens, but now 95% of them are gone. Very few are left. Most of the time, if you see pitch pines, it's gonna be like this one, just one big one on its own with a couple of other pretty big ones around, but no young pitch pines, no saplings anywhere in sight. So next time you're out in the woods and you're hiking, you look around a little bit, really take a gander at the ecosystem you're standing in and you realize, hey, I found myself in a pitch pine barren. Don't be afraid to show them a little encouragement. Thanks for watching. Proud of you, big guy. Keep up the good work.